Good morning and welcome to Morning Matters. This morning we have made it to a piece of heaven on earth. I've not said that in quite a long time because that has not been the case in quite a long time. This morning we are at Naya Resort in Placencia. A lot of you may have heard about Naya, but you've not experienced it the way most of us have experienced it. That's right, we experienced it yesterday. This morning we will speaking to this morning we will be speaking to Stuart Crone. People all over the world know who Stuart Kroon is. Uh, we know, they know what he does, where he's from. They know a little bit of his history because he's been mm. on television for the past 40 something years, I would imagine, or maybe longer. But this morning we're here to interview him as the managing director from Naya and get into a little bit about what Stuart Kroon is up to these days. Stuart, good morning, how are you? <laughs> Very good morning to you, Rhonda. Nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. For anybody in broadcasting, especially in Belize and in the Caribbean, to be able to sit down with Stuart Crone is definitely a privilege. So I say thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be at Naya and to sit down with us this morning. It's a pleasure. To, it's a pleasure to be here <laughs> in my own place. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Stuart, tell us who's Stuart Crone from the side of his personal journey. You know, a lot of people see Stuart Crone and they think they know who Stuart Crone is because they see him on TV or they read an article about him or they come to Naya. But that's really not who Stuart Crone is. That's what Stuart Crone does. Mm. Who is Stuart Crone? Uh, that's a question that would take a very long answer. For we that. have time. <laughs> 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 that's, that's kind of general. Um, I came to Belize in 1973 as a 23-year-old young man in the middle of uh, law school at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Came here on a sailing holiday in Placencia. And <clears throat> at the end of a beautiful week at sea, what well, do you know how nice a week at sea in a 50-foot sailboat can be? The captain of the boat, the owner of the boat and a very small resort in Placencia said that his first mate was going to go back to lobster fishing and he needed a new first mate on his sailboat would I like the job? And for some reason I said, I thought about it for about two seconds, and I said, sure. Stuart, you essentially gave up law school to be a first mate on a boat. How did your parents take that? Considering this is the 70s, the normal person would not just decide, I'm going, oh, I'm going to give up law school, I'm going to go to Belize, and I'm going to stay there, and I'm going to be the first mate. What was going through your mind? You know something, Rhonda? Obviously not much was going through my mind. Belize has a way of um, captivating people. You kind of, it gets you in a little dreamlike state. So I think when I said yes to that job offer, I must, must have been in a kind of a dreamlike state because, but when I got, I had to go back to Michigan to, you know, take a leave of absence from school, sell my car, all your little things you accumulate in life. And then I thought to myself, well, boy, I, I, I already accepted the job. I can't go back on my word. Even if I had second thoughts, I felt like I had to complete that. So and, uh, you could not, you could leave school, but you can't go back on your word to be the first mate. <laughs> kind of uh, something <laughs> like that, pretty so much. So you yeah. can, I'd have to use the word disappointment if it was or wasn't to your, you could disappoint your parents because they were hoping to have a lawyer for a son. And then they turn out that they're going to have a Caribbean sailor boy. They got over it. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take them to get over it? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you a little a funny story. Um, as long as I've been here, say 45 years, I would go back and visit my parents maybe every year or every two years. And invariably, if my parents pick me up at the airport in uh, Tampa, they lived and um, they would drive past a place on the way to there where they lived and it, they would drive past a law school Stetson University Law School in St. Petersburg and I knew it was going to happen every time we passed by this law school with its distinctive architecture my mother would turn to me and say Stuart you think you're going to go back to law school <laughs> now this happened up until I was 65 years old wow so <laughs> probably says more about my mother than it does about me but for sure. Uh, yes, but that, so that tells you a little bit about how she felt about it. So you decided to stay. What was life like when you decided, because I'm sure that you weren't the first mate for very long. What did you do next? What happened, Rhonda, was uh, 
six years of accumulated student loans, six months after you leave your last stint of school, the loans catch up with you. you so I got paying. a letter that said you owe X thousand dollars, time to start paying. And uh, working as first mate on the boat, I didn't make any money. I would get tips now and then, but you know, I had no savings, nothing. And I um, said, all right, I got to make a decision. I'm living outside of the country. They can't go chase me down for the money. So I could just skip out or I could make a commitment to pay. And I felt that I had an obligation to pay. So I moved from Placencia to Belize City to find a job. And I was very fortunate in that um, I had skills. I was a, a, a strong tennis player and tennis coach. And um, the Pickwick Club hired me as the tennis coach at the Pickwick Club. Now this is something people in your audience would not remember except the old heads. Pickwick Club used to be on North Front Street. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> would, you, would, you did not know that, for example. No. It was right next to where the old Storage Limited, where BSI used to be. Now, very few people would remember BSI being there. But it's, it's kind of near where the big parking lot is next to City Council. Okay. On North, that part of North Front Street, by the, between the old fire station there by the Swing Bridge. It was a f fabulous job. It was a great tennis club, great uh, tennis court. And I taught dozens and dozens of, of kids how to play tennis. And some of them were champions. Some of them were just n nice people. And so I got to know a lot of people that way. And they were, uh, there were some families who were very nice to me. And uh, I would never forget how nice they treated me in that day. Stuart, like you said, you could have just, there, here, nobody would have come to Belize to find you for no student loan. That's and true. you had already <laughs> made changes in your life already that I would imagine that you weren't planning on going back to the States in the immediate future at that time. Well, I wasn't planning anything. I was at the age <laughs> where you just, you, you were kind just of live doing. day to day. Right? But in all of that living day to day, why was it important that you lived up to those obligations that you had made so many years ago? You know, we're all brought up in different ways, Rhonda. It's, there's no great, I don't many, make any great claim to morality or whatever, but sometimes you just, should I do the right thing or the wrong thing? And it comes out you do the right thing. How did Stuart Crone end up to be the first person to open a television station in this country? That's a whole other story, of course. Um, I had a great advantage having grown up in America. <clears throat> At least I knew what TV was, was like, like what it, or what it was supposed to be like. So prior to that, back in the, um, in the 70s, I was a editor and publisher of a magazine called Bruckdown. Now, again, people wouldn't necessarily remember that. So I was doing the journalism. The journalism, the writing part was easy. What happened was that started in 1977. Around late 1981, television came to Belize. You've, more people recall the old days of Channel 9 then Channel 7. It was all pirate TV from the States. But what happened is a lot of the business community wanted to advertise on TV, but there was no one to make the ads. So I was publishing a magazine, but the advertising, which is the lifeblood of any publication, was declining because people were starting to put <clears throat> advertising on television. It's the same now. People are now taking money out of television to go digital. Um, it was the same thing then, but people were going from magazines or from radio to television. And so I said, well, if I want to stay in business, I was still paying off those loans. <laughs> <laughs> Only I'd accumulated a family by now. Uh, I had to make some money. I said, well, you know what? Let's try this TV thing. And so um, I went into Bank of Nova Scotia, a big up Scotia Bank. There you go. And um, the manager there was very nice, and he loaned me I think $25,000. $25,000 back in the 70s? Yeah. That's a whole lot of money. Yeah, I borrowed a piece of collateral from <laughs> someone. Anyway, it's a long story, but they didn't, I didn't just walk in and they walked out with the money. We, well, I'm, saying, we, no, I'm just saying we, that you, you made a huge investment yes, back then. It, it was, was a big it investment. Was, it was a lot of money, yeah, and bought a bunch of television e equipment and um, came back and tried to figure out how to use it. Hired a a fellow who used to work at Radio Belize, Evan Gordon. And together we kind of figured out how to do the thing and it 
we made some memorable advertisements in those days. Uh, I won't even mention them, but they were pretty funny. We got we did some documentaries. We did it. The first really cool thing we did was a documentary called um, "This Is Belize." It was hosted by Eddie Seferino Coleman, who again, not many people your age would remember, but I remember uh, him. You remember him, okay? Uh, and yeah, we did a lot of cool stuff back then. You know, Stuart, I ask you these things for people to realize that Stuart Crone did not just wake up to be 60-something years old and the managing <laughs> owner, director at Naya, or he did not just wake up one day and ended up on Channel 5, owning Channel 5. And then, um, because I think a lot of times, Stuart, people think that you were born this way, that you did not mm. have to create yourself. But uh, from what you have shared so far, it is that you have good values. You know, you stay true to the basic moral fiber of life if you owe it you will pay it if you make your commitment you will live i mean sometimes you can sometimes you can't but hope our bankers are listening you know yes <laughs> but not only that you you are committed to it you will do mm. what it takes to try and get it done yeah. a lot of people out there are running away from their responsibilities so if you want to get somewhere you have to do something you have to you have to invest yourself and live up to your commitment what is Stuart Crone doing now hmm no, I mean, uh, we sold the TV station yes. back in uh, 2008. And, but prior to that, I had always done on the side some small real estate investments okay. um, down in Placencia. Uh, buy a small piece of land, subdivide it, sell the lots, use the money to build a house. So that had been growing. And then <clears throat> I came upon a, a very large piece of land, uh, 254 acres, which is a lot of land on a very small peninsula and I, um, I very much wanted to buy it but I, I didn't have the financial muscle to do so so I took it to my partners at Channel 5 my business partners I don't own I never did own all of it and and don't own Naya by myself I have some very good business partners who've been together with me since 1982 actually wow. um, and asked them would you like to get in into the into the uh, land development and resort business and they thought about it and said sure and we borrowed a bunch of money from my a bank and um took on the project and sold some kept some wheeled and dealed it a little bit to get the money to start uh, a residential community and then the re later on the resort that is now naya what was your vision for naya you know, to be honest with you, um, Rhonda, the main focus was the residential community. <clears throat> what we discovered, even though we, we had always planned to have a resort as part of it, it was originally going to be a very small resort, maybe 10 or 12 rooms, a little bar, a funky restaurant, that kind of thing. But once we got into the business of developing the land, and it, it was really a kind of, by Belize standards, was a pretty large development, when it came time to actually put in the resort, we thought it out and said, you know, let's, what's the phrase, go big or go home? That's right. Kind of thing. <laughs> so we, we made it a little larger and a little more luxurious than the original plan. In other words, once we got here and saw the, what was then the current state of the tourism industry, I mean, we were no strangers to the industry. You would know yourself as a reporter. And when you're in journalism, you get to see a lot of what's going on in the country. And tourism is such a large part of Belize's economy. <clears throat> and I had so many friends in the business. I felt like I knew the tourism industry very well. Um, and it was time we could see what the future was holding. And we thought it was time to raise the bar, that it was time for Belize to kind of take its place, to move away from the traditional, oh, it's a place to come to fish and dive, because to a place where you can have a real, more luxurious, experience since we made the resort more focused on spa a little more focused on the feminine side because women are increasingly becoming the deciders of where you go on vacation how much you spend that kind of thing so it worked out it, it was a it was a wise decision I think. you did not raise the bar no most people can't touch the bar okay you know <laughs> normally before if you're a high jumper you could reach you could scale the bar now i need my binoculars to see the bar but job well done um you did say that will that get you another free night <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just the truth actually um 
I can't say that we've stayed in a place like Naya before in Belize. It is absolutely amazing. Um, I was talking to Trinity and she said to me that no smoking is allowed in, in this resort. Pretty much if you're not on the beach or in the parking lot, you can't smoke here. Yeah, preferably the parking lot. Preferably the parking lot. <laughs> you know, and that is good um, because when people come here, they come here for a natural experience, a full natural experience. And that is what they would um, experience here or have here at Naya. Tell me a little bit about the spa concept. Again, going back traditionally, Belize and to an even greater extent, Placencia, is, it's always been considered kind of a man's destination. Even though more women are fishing, more women are diving, more women are going into the jungle and all that kind of thing. Traditionally, it's an activity place where the guy says, all right, honey, I'm going out fishing or I'm going out diving. Enjoy your book in your lounge on the beach kind of thing. Pretty much. Um, but obviously in, in 2018, we see um, women are making decisions for themselves and they're picking the place to go, whether it's by themselves with other women or with their husbands or significant others they want to do things that they want to do and one thing that's very popular with women is a spa experience um, again it didn't take a lot of brains or vision to see that in belize while there are some very good individual spas they tend to be smaller a little more intimate and um, there was no resort in belize that was really based around a spa and so we took a lot of care. We, took, we got a lot of good professional advice on how to create a spa. And we created what I think is a very unique uh, place. It's, it's not what I say, because I'm not a spa guy, but people who know spas say it is a very unusual and unique spa. It is a special space. And while I'm not a spa girl, I go to spas from time to time. But when you go to spas, you generally are in one general area and you have one experience and then you go. But here you can come to the spa, you can sit down, have coffee or tea, look out, read a book and wait for your turn. Normally it's a chore to wait when it's your turn at the spa. Here it would be a pleasure. It's an all day event. <laughs> we, t well, we, t this, we created the spa. I mean, you can come and have a massage and go yes. back to your room, but what we, try to advise people is make it a whole day yes. uh, thing. Yeah, get a manicure, pedicure, facial, massage, have your lunch, have a drink. Have a swim. A book. Yeah, there's, there's a, a pool, pool back there. there. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's I wish a, I spent more time back you there. You should, you Stuart. It's an amazing right. space. If you are looking for an amazing spa experience, and I'm not, not because I'm sitting here next to Stuart, because if it wasn't, I'd say so, even though I don't sleep here last night, okay? But I will tell you, it is an experience that you will not get anywhere else in this country. You can't get it because it does not exist. Um, and I'm but the best part, let me interrupt Rhonda, okay, okay, okay. is that Belizeans and Belizean residents get a 25% discount at the spa. You know what? And you don't have to stay for come and use the spa. You could just come and use the spa. Mm -hmm. And that is an experience by itself. I mean, you also have yoga. But if you want to come and stay, you can because 50% discount on our rooms. It's not a summer special. It's not a it's holiday. Always it is all year round. The one exception is between Christmas and New Year, that time. We can't honor that, but every other part of the year, straight 50% on our rates, no questions asked, boom. We like our Belizean clientele. We court that market. We welcome Belizeans. Our staff is 100% Belizean. From the top down, 100%. When Belizeans come here, they are treated well. Uh, they're treated actually extra specially well by our entire staff. We are tuned in to that. We never forgot where we came from when we started out in business and television. As you know in broadcasting, if you don't have the public behind you, you've got nothing. And it's, it's kind of our way of paying back. We, we feel very strongly about that. I like that you say that, Stuart, because a lot of times Belizeans are so wary to go to amazing places like these because they feel that they're going to be treated out of the ordinary but i can tell you when you come here from the time you land here you are treated like everybody else and i've traveled some places and i know what it feels like to be treated like a tourist and i know what it feels like to not be treated like a tourist mm -hmm. here you are treated like everybody else you're treated as an equal so definitely you can come down here 50 percent off Stuart, sir as long as you're belizean okay so people i encourage you to bring your family out and explore belize um you also have things like kayaking and 
paddle boards and different activities here. Yeah, the use of the kayaks is free, use of the paddle boards is free, the pool, bicycles, gym, fabulous gym. So we give the guys something to do too. If they want to work out, they can, while the girlfriend is in the spa, they can be at the gym. Tell me about your restaurant. <sighs> what? <laughs> what, the, what they say, every John Crow think he pick me white. <laughs> So, I love it. The, the I pick fully me, so love it. So the restaurant has to be good. <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, again which we've named the, our our evening dining restaurant is called 1981. Obviously, if you're a Belizean, you know the significance mm -hmm. of that. And we try to make it kind of a fusion of kind of Belizean style things, but with a little twist. So um, my favorite dish in 1981 is called seafood dokono. You know? So it's a dukanu with a beautiful seafood stew kind of put over it. Oh, fabulous. You know what, Stuart? Last night I had the opportunity to try that. And because uh -huh. the person I was with say, he no want no dukunu. I never eat no dukunu. But what I ate was good. It was exceptional. It was pork. I had the pork ribs. Okay. It was really, really tasty. Um, everything that I've eaten here has been absolutely amazing. Um, well, let me give a plug to all restaurants in Belize. It's hard to have a bad meal in Belize. The food across the country is really good. We hear that from our guests all the time and we don't hesitate to send our guests to all the fine restaurants uh, on the peninsula. It's, this isn't the kind of place where you come and we try and keep you captive. We have free shuttle service to Placencia Village at certain times of the day and we encourage our guests to get out. In other words, there's, there's no place on this peninsula that is separated from Placencia village or Senbite village. We encourage our people to, to get out because that's, that's the attraction. It's the destination that's the attraction. It's not any one resort. It's the whole, the, thing, the nice thing about Belize is because it's such a unique and special place and the people are so special that um, invariably when someone finishes their vacation and they go home, that's what they remember most, is the people they encountered. Yeah, the rooms at your resort might be great, the food's great, the spa's great, but without the, um, the cultural, the social part of it, it's, it's not going to be a successful resort or a destination. What's next for Stuart Kroon? <laughs> <laughs> Retirement? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think you will live forever, no. so what's next no, for man, you? No, man, it's fun creating <laughs> things. There's, I got a few more tricks up my sleeve. Yeah. Excellent. If you were to say that there's one regret that you have in your life, what would it be? It, it's it's um, probably should have paid a little more attention to my family in the early days. What That's, is? Well, because you know, you, um, you know, you're in a new business. Let's say if it was whether publishing a magazine or starting Channel Five, that kind of thing. You, I mean, I put in the time, put in extraordinary hours. And when you're doing that, you don't always pay as much uh, attention to your family as you should have. So m I'm fortunate my two sons work with me. I am no longer uh, married, but um, you know the fact that I get to see my two sons every day is, is important. But I probably should have spent a little more time with them when they were younger. What is your proudest moment? Um, let me, when my two sons were born, how about that? That's a good... Since Father's Day was last Sunday, I will st <laughs> I'll stick with that one. What yeah, is your, nothing can replace that. What is your greatest wish? I, I would like to see a greater dedication to public service. Hey, Stuart, thank you for stopping in and sharing with me this morning. Thank you for hosting us. Anything you'd like to leave us with? I'm good, Rhonda. <laughs> We're going to take a break and be back. At West Track Belize City, we are looking to help you save both your time and money. We've also improved our stock levels to ensure we have everything you might need for your automotive or agricultural needs. Additionally, West Track has added heavy duty and industrial parts to keep your trucks and equipment running. At West Track Belize City, we understand that your time is important, so we want to bring our services to you at your convenience. Now you can simply send us a message on WhatsApp or Facebook and we will be right there to help with any questions you may have. Hello and welcome to a &R. With the wide variety of household items, party supplies and gift ideas to choose from, a &R is definitely the shopping spot of choice for you. We have loads of kitchen appliances such as freezers, washers, refrigerators, pots, pans and other items including stationery, school bags, swimming pools, sturdy plastic chairs and toys for boys and girls. 
Check out a r at any of our many locations in San Pedro, Orange Walk, Cayo, and Belize City. At a r we strive to provide all your shopping needs under one roof. Hoy Eye Center has the latest visual examination equipment and a fully prepared operating theater capable of handling any eye surgery, whether scheduled or emergency. Today, the center has a full complement of competent staff and continues to build its client base and reputation by providing personal and quality service. We provide you with scratch resistant plastic lenses, transition lenses, single vision, bifocals, progressive invisible multifocals, AVO contact lenses, and sunglasses. We have a variety of brand name glasses. Hoi Eye Center is offering a special deal on a complete pair of glasses for only $150. We are located in Belize City at the corner of St. Joseph and St. Thomas Street. We are open Monday to Fridays from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Phone number 223 0994 or 223-5741. Hoy Eye Center, a proud sponsor of Guadalupe Media. Looking for quality and affordable fashion? The It Store, where you can shop fashion for less. We have clothing for the entire family and quality that fits your budget. The number one store in town. Fine kids, men, and women apparel for all occasions. We are located at the number one Queen Street, Belize City. Call us at 223-1552. Remember to like us on Facebook. The It Store. Find it, love it, buy it for less. New Buildings Limited is the company of choice when it comes to design, fabricating, and erection of wide-span metal buildings in Belize. At New Buildings, we have a team of well-trained professionals that can produce the most innovative and durable metal structures. Be it domestic or industrial buildings, we can get it done for you. We have put together some of the most outstanding metal structures in the country. We also do estimates and consulting. Visit new buildings in Spanish Lookout or give them a call at 631-8723 or 610-5185. New Buildings Limited, the experts when it comes to metal structures in Belize. Hola, hola, hola. Can I get a 7 up or Pepsi Cola? right here from Naya Resort. Guess what? Stuart decided that he will sit in with me at least for a portion of this segment. I had to twist his arm, his ears, every possible thing on him. But guess what? He's here. Stuart, thank you for Should staying I say you're me. welcome? <laughs> yes, yes. 
Well, it's very rare when somebody comes on Morning Matters and they don't help me out with a matter. All and right. since you are into making this world a better place, I figure your contribution would be greatly appreciated. So let's read the first matter. Because I would imagine you don't have any matters. Keep talking. You ask the questions, <laughs> I'll answer the questions. I'm in a relationship with a woman who, has, who is HIV positive. We both want a child, but I am scared of sex without condoms. What? That's a, that's a and what's the Okay, what's the question? I guess he wants to know how he will achieve children with a woman that is HIV positive. Artificial insemination. Mm. I don't think any of us on here are doctors, so I would say you need to go and deal with your, have a sit down with your medical advisor. Yeah, I would leave that in the hands of the Yeah, you need to go and see a doctor and have them advise you on how to proceed because that is not a matter of opinion, that's a matter of education. And I am not sure that I can educate you enough to help you with that decision making. Yeah, I believe it is possible for an HIV positive woman who becomes pregnant to, with the proper medical care to give birth to a, a non-HIV positive child. But beyond that, I don't know if a doctor would actually recommend that. So I pl I'll plead ignorance on that one. Rana. Me too. Good morning. I am 20 years old. My woman is 57. My friends are talking about me. Should I be concerned? So you that are the 20-year-old, she is 57 and you want to know what to do? Did the question say the f his friends are becoming concerned? Yeah. <laughs> I think he needs to be more concerned, not the friends. Uh, and if yeah. Age, I mean, again, the nice thing about, one nice thing about with these age appropriate relationships, it's not that big a deal as it might be other places, but 20 and 57 is, is getting up there. 20 and 40 could work. But um, that gap just seems, doesn't seem realistic. I almost feel like you are being abused. And I say that because you think you're 20 and you think that you're a man, but you're really still not a full man yet. I mean, you are on the verge of becoming a man. And I would think that this woman is taking advantage of you. You might think otherwise because of the concept of manhood that you have in your head. But based on what is happening, I would say you need to check your position because in three years she's going to be 60. Um, and in a little while, she'll be 70, and you'll be like 25 or 30, and I don't see how that's going to work out. But it's the horse that you are riding. You can decide if you're going to keep on riding it or get off. I'd say get off. But, Rondell, I think you're looking at it just from a physical or, dare I say, a yeah. sexual aspect. You know? You're worried about the boy being abused. I would <laughs> more think that it might be an a older woman of means and that the young boy is taking advantage of the woman's financial strengths. <laughs> To, to, um, well, Stuart, live if the you good, are good almost life. 60 and you can't hold on to your money, you deserve for part with it. Um, <laughs> well, I have to digest that one a, a little bit. But I mean, there's a way. Because with age comes you, wisdom, man. You're supposed to be wiser than that. If I'm yeah. 60 and rich, no 20 year old coming to take my money. I would agree with you, but. <laughs> uh, yeah. 20, <laughs> look here, there are people, you say you're 20, you're almost a man, but you're not. Yet there are people who are 40 and 50 who aren't men. True, yet. true, true. Right? I mean, we all mature at different rates. But yeah, that 20 and 57, that's a little Uncomfortable. Rough. But you're paying short shrift to your fellow females because there are plenty of women who are at 57 or 67 got and plenty of go in them. And that's okay. But Sheena, seem, neither of them seem to be have plenty of common sense. No? I'll, I'll, I'll I'll one more, Stuart. One more. This is painful. This is painful, Rhonda. <laughs> I did not sign up for this. But <laughs> you know what I ahead. like about you, Stuart? Go ahead. <laughs> people, I will, let me, before I say that, I'll say that people that worked with you maybe 20 years ago in the media might say, who is this new Stuart? He sat <laughs> there and he's so patient. No, no, no. It's age. Old age will do that. <laughs> well, they will do that to yeah, you? Uh -huh. It, it, it mellow you out? Absolutely, yes. See, Stuart is mellow. For all you other people that sitting, I can, I, I can hear some of them saying, Stuart, he not railing up yet. He not jump off of that set yet. He's still sitting there. Stuart is a nice man, okay? I don't care where all on the set. Stuart is a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> all right? Go ahead. <laughs> but one more. One more, Stuart. One more. All right. Let me go to one that 
Oh, this is a long one. We're not giving a whole Where long one. Where do you one. get these questions? People send them. Okay. I don't, I, I didn't make them up. This one says, good morning. I love my boyfriend. I am 20 years old and he's 43. Some people think he's too old for me, but I love him. And he shows me that he loves me. We've been together for only six months. He met me when I was very slim. And now that I've gained some weight, he still calls me beautiful. She, I think her concern is that she doesn't know how to address the other people's concern. Well, there's nobody else's business but his and hers. True. Now, now, I can relate to that simply because my girlfriend is 15 years younger than me, and she's beautiful. And I cannot relate to the getting heavier part because that's not the case. But um, and yeah, now I've lost my train of thought. But um, yeah, there's nothing wrong. If you love well, someone, you, you, they're beautiful to you no matter how they look. I think because she's 20 and she needs to be careful and because the relationship is only six months old you know when you're 26 months it's such a long time but when you're 40 something six months is just a short time you know like the only you get know. you're saying that I don't know that in, to be true in, in my <laughs> opinion you know like when you're dating somebody for six months when you're 20 oh my god it's just it's just beautiful but the older you get six months is just sometimes just a trial period so I would say take your time make sure that where you are is really where you want to be and and realize that you are young you have a lot of growing you have a lot more exposure to get in your life it could be genuine it could be that this is the guy for you but i'd say go slow yeah i'm not sure what the question mo that your your viewer was really asking there i think she's she's con her concern is that her friends are concerned about the age difference it's 23 years age different and mm. she's 20. Maybe if she was 40 and he's 63, they wouldn't be so concerned. Understood. Right? It's okay. not that it is 23 years, in my opinion, 23 years difference. It's where the 23 years begins. Uh, I could, yes. That difference, the older you get, the older the two people get, the much narrower that, that becomes. It's not a big deal in when fact, you are 40-something yeah. and he's 60-something because both of you are at a different... You are more on the same path than when you're 20 and he's 43, at least generally. The big problem there tends to be in career choices. I mean, someone 20 really may not know what they want to do with their life. Someone 43 is probably well settled on a career path, and sometimes there's a real conflict. Absolutely. Uh, Stuart, I have to say you've been great fun this morning. Thank you for we'll stopping in. Thank you for again sometime. That, I, I look forward to that. You hear that? Ollie, you hear that wherever you are in the rest of the world? Stuart said we have to do this again. We are going to be doing this again. Stuart, it's been fun. Thank you for hosting us at Naya. Anything you'd like to leave us with? Invite somebody to Naya. Tell them why they should come to Naya and Placencia. It's a good, it's a, it's a really different experience and you, you will come away with a kind of a different view of um, your own country and maybe the tourism industry itself. Absolutely amazing. On, the on that note, we're going to take a break and come back with our third and final segment. At West Track Belize City, we are looking to help you save both your time and money. We've also improved our stock levels to ensure we have everything you might need for your automotive or agricultural needs. Additionally, West Track has added heavy duty and industrial parts to keep your trucks and equipment running. At West Track Belize City, we understand that your time is important, so we want to bring our services to you at your convenience. Now you can simply send us a message on WhatsApp or Facebook and we will be right there to help with any questions you may have. Hello and welcome to ANR. With the wide variety of household items, party supplies and gift ideas to choose from, ANR is definitely the shopping spot of choice for you. We have loads of kitchen appliances such as freezers, washers, refrigerators, pots, pans, and other items including stationery, school bags, swimming pools, sturdy plastic chairs, and toys for boys and girls. Check out ANR at any of our many locations in San Pedro, Orange Walk, Cayo, and Belize City. At ANR, we strive to provide all your shopping needs under one roof. Of all the colors in the world, Orange is perhaps the most exciting, distinctive, and vibrant color there is. Just like the Orange Gallery. But what makes the Orange Gallery outstanding is what's inside. A huge collection of breathtaking wood carvings and a spectacular display of home decor accessories and magnificent gift items. 
Browse a fabulous selection of furniture from chairs to entertainment centers. And wait till you see the Orange Gallery's breathtaking selection of jewelry for every occasion and every person, from casual to dressy bracelets and earrings to great items for men, including a spectacular choice of handmade knives. Then, when you've shopped till you're ready to drop, drop in to the Orange Gallery's fabulous restaurant and recharge for the rest of your Orange Expedition. The Orange Gallery, beautiful, unique, exquisite. New Buildings Limited is the company of choice when it comes to design, fabricating, and erection of wide-span metal buildings in Belize. At New Buildings, we have a team of well-trained professionals that can produce the most innovative and durable metal structures. Be it domestic or industrial buildings, we can get it done for you. We have put together some of the most outstanding metal structures in the country. We also do estimates and consulting. Visit new buildings in Spanish Lookout or give them a call at 631-8723 or 610-5185. New Buildings Limited, the experts when it comes to metal structures in Belize. Hola, hola, hola. Can I get a seven up or Pepsi Cola? final segment of morning matters right here from naya resort i have to say the last two segments with stuart has been just blissful now we've been joined by drew yeah now you're stuck with me what can i what say anyway drew how have you been enjoying your stay here you know this is really really exceptional i i didn't realize anything like this existed in belize and and you come through it's it's secure the beach is wonderful. The facilities are outstanding. The spa, I, I, it's so huge. You have little private bungalows for your spa treatments. You can hang out, have tea, swim. I like all the watch things. Watch the birds. You know, I like a lot of it, but I like what um, uh, the yoga instructor said this morning. What was that? Listen. Good morning, my name is Aaron Crone. Um, I run the yoga studio here at Naya. Occasionally get people sweating and stretching and once in a while standing on their heads. Uh, yoga studio here at Naya is open to the public. There is a posted schedule. Um, it changes between low and high season, but at the very minimum there are three classes every week. And there are also private classes available by appointment. Uh, yeah, open to people of all skill levels. Come pay me a visit. Um, I'll meet you where you're at. Now you and I know that I need to be met where I am. And where I am is somewhere way back yonder. That's true. <laughs> You're hard to catch up with. So I have to say it was fun doing yoga this morning. If you notice in the clip, uh, I'm trying to do a handstand or a headstand. It's not working out well, is it? And I'll show you me later on. I can do it out here in the sand. Well, I would look forward to see you out here in the sand. We kayaked this morning. We did a lot of fun stuff. So we definitely encourage you to come on down tonight. Yeah, the kayaking was really cool, too. Yes, I thought it would be more strenuous, but it wasn't. Those, but the mangroves, I didn't really... Those are like big trees. 
I thought they were all short bushes, but oh. they, they got to be big trees. They, they have, you don't see those big mangrove islands? Well, yeah, but they're, the, the mangroves aren't that tall. Out here, they're like 30 foot trees. Hi, yeah, 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 and yeah. then one row where they planted them, they keep them all trimmed. It's like a little hedge. It's really nice. I like it. I like this spot. I will be back. Hopefully, we both will be back. Let's jump the into a matter. food is good. They got some extra Age marinated, rum. Uh, not marinated, infused rums. Infused rum. And tequilas. It's really good. What, what was that margarita you had? It's a hot, hot pepper infused jalapeno. tequila. Jalapeno infused tequila. Well, it's good. I know you can't think of matters right now, so you definitely don't have any matters. So it's time to jump into somebody I else's matter. I haven't matter. had enough time to have a matter. There you go. I love what you say when you, what you say that you don't fall in love and out of love with a person. Because I was with my children's sure. father for 10 years when we separated. I almost died, but I got over it. It's been like 12 years since we were separated, but I can't love another person the way I had loved him. It took me two years after our separation that I could have allowed another man to touch me. And still now it's hard for me to have sex with another man. I'm so alone. My kid's father still comes around when he is in Belize from the States, but we're not together. Hmm. Hmm. Good Sounds morning. Like she's still hung up on him. Yeah, I don't know how I could be hung up for that long. To, you, you just got to get over it. Get up and get over him. Good morning, my favorite show. Well, thank you. Is what? Morning Matters. This is her favorite oh, show. I thought she was going to say what her favorite show was. I heard that my husband got a girl, a young girl, 20 years younger than him, pregnant. I approached both, but to no avail. I moved out. We worked things out eventually. He went through the courts. He kept texting us and disrespecting our children and home. What to do? I, it sounds like she already did it. She's split up, right? It seemed like you worked. You said we worked things out eventually. Oh, she keeps texting us and disrespecting our children and home. Then get a restraining oh. order against her. Well, some of that, uh, he, he's the one that's got to put a stop to that. He can't. Well, you don't know that. He can't. I mean... I, because he can't, he's not he's the boss the of her. He's the one that's got to tell her to stop. I'm sure that he has. She's telling him to stop isn't any good. But yeah, I, if, if it continues, get a restraining order. I would think she'd have something better to do and move on with her own life after almost breaking up a family. She didn't, let me, let me, and she sent another text and I'll get into it right now, but she didn't try to break up the family. The husband broke she up the family. She was a big part of it. As much as the husband was. Right. You know, and she didn't try to break and up the family. And the husband made his amends and he's back she on needs, track, she needs, to, she needs to get on with uh, it. I agree. They had an affair, brought a child into this world. She knew he was married. She got pregnant, although she said she had protected herself. Because he did not want any more children. Child comes. They were never together. Just occasional sex. Now she sees him now she sees him women be wise you know the results of this situation don't expect for any other out outcome family court and bitterness you know i understand your resentment towards this woman but be mindful that she did not make herself pregnant your husband made her pregnant right and and everybody is responsible for their own Actions. Yes. And while she said she was protected, he should have made sure to be protected so he didn't bring home any disease right. to you. You know, he had so much. He failed on so many levels. Both of them failed, yes. But he, she is not married to you. He is you know, married to you. I wonder how that conversation went. Well, but, but, but honey, she said she was, pre she was protected. I didn't know she was going to get pregnant. Right? So well, he shouldn't have been there anyway. He shouldn't have been. And you need to challenge him and charge him for that with that responsibility. You can't be too light on him just because he's your husband. Yes, he's her husband. He made a mistake. Er, he made a, great, a grave error. And he now has to live with the consequences of those errors. Guess what? If the woman is continuously harassing you, then yes. If he can't fix it, then family court, um, um, court will fix it by giving him a restraining order. And you're right. 
women need to learn to do better. You can't mess with a married man and think that if you have a child with him, he's going to leave his wife. Guess what? He married and have children with her and he's not leaving her. What makes, he, what, and what makes you think that he will leave them for you, for one child? All right. No. He went for a joyride and the ride got corrupt. Sorry. <laughs> That's just how it is. He got a big bump in the road. There you go. I'll tell you what, though, Drew, morning matters definitely has to wind down. It's been a fun, fun time over the last three days. Oh, Stopping, yes. ending here at Naya has been just an amazing experience. So we encourage you guys for the time that you are in Belize, whether it is vacation, whether you live here, you must explore Belize. You must come on out, explore. This is summer, like I've been saying. And at summer, you need to see and do things. Come to see what Placencia have to offer, go to Boca Wina, go to Hopkins, explore your country. So when you go back to wherever it is that you came from or school, you'd go back a wiser, happier person. Indeed. Guys, until next time, we encourage you to take care of yourselves and each other. This is Ronda along with Drew. Saying goodbye. Bye-bye. At West Track Belize City, we are looking to help you save both your time and money. We've also improved our stock levels to ensure we have everything you might need for your automotive or agricultural needs. Additionally, West Track has added heavy duty and industrial parts to keep your trucks and equipment running. At West Track Belize City, we understand that your time is important, so we want to bring our services to you at your convenience. Now you can simply send us a message on WhatsApp or Facebook and we will be right there to help with any questions you may have. Hello and welcome to a &R. With a wide variety of household items, party supplies and gift ideas to choose from, a &R is definitely the shopping spot of choice for you. We have loads of kitchen appliances such as freezers, washers, refrigerators, pots, pans and other items including stationery, school bags, swimming pools, sturdy plastic chairs and toys for boys and girls. Check out a &R at any of our many locations in San Pedro, Orange Walk, Cayo and Belize City. At a &R, we strive to provide all your shopping needs under one roof. Of all the colors in the world, orange is perhaps the most exciting, distinctive, and vibrant color there is. Just like the Orange Gallery. But what makes the Orange Gallery outstanding is what's inside. A huge collection of breathtaking wood carvings and a spectacular display of home decor accessories and magnificent gift items. Browse a fabulous selection of furniture from chairs to entertainment centers. And wait till you see the Orange Gallery's breathtaking selection of jewelry for every occasion and every person, from casual to dressy bracelets and earrings to great items for men, including a spectacular choice of handmade knives. Then, when you've shopped till you're ready to drop, Drop in to the Orange Gallery's fabulous restaurant and recharge for the rest of your Orange Expedition. The Orange Gallery. Beautiful. Unique. Exquisite. New Buildings Limited is the company of choice when it comes to design, fabricating, and erection of wide-span metal buildings in Belize. At New Buildings, we have a team of well-trained professionals that can produce the most innovative and durable metal structures. Be it domestic or industrial buildings, we can get it done for you. We have put together some of the most outstanding metal structures in the country. We also do estimates and consulting. Visit new buildings in Spanish Lookout or give them a call at 631-8723 or 610-5185. New Buildings Limited, the experts when it comes to metal structures in Belize. Hola, hola, hola. Can I get a seven up or Pepsi Cola? Hey, Miss Lara, if you want to treat me, please don't give me no soft drink. Where are the Mary? Please give me a Pepsi Cola, Pepsi Cola, Pepsi Cola.
es de raza, raza grande o pequeña Dale rambocán, rambocán Si es delgado o robusto, pelo largo, pelo corto Dale rambocán, rambocán Rambocán en su presentación Para adultos o cachorros Dale rambocán Para que tu perro tenga piel sana y pelo brillante Huesos y dientes fuertes, músculos resistentes y mejor digestión Dale lo mejor Dale Rambocan, salud y vigor para tu perro. 